Thank you for checking out my video. I really love Hatsune Miku and enjoy sharing some of that dedication by making videos all about her. To improve my content, I decided to launch my own Patreon page, where you can support me if you feel like Miku's magic reached you by watching them, with neat rewards waiting too. Link in the description. Well, that's all, and now enjoy the new video. Hi guys, Kevin from Sankey Miku here again as always. Thank you for checking out my newest video. I know it has been quite some time since my last video, but I'm glad to be back in front of the camera for once. Unfortunately, there was really nothing I could do about it. Man kann ja nicht mal eine Sekunde stehen, ich habe nur auf mein Handy geschaut, schon kamen zwei. Also das ist schon... Zweiten Tages noch eine Fahrt mit der Ferry. Wo ist das famous McDonald's? Oh, da. Ja. <lacht> Miku-chan, Lin-chan, don't always go about revealing all my secrets in front of the camera. There's people watching. What do you guys think though? Isn't she pretty cute? But I should stop this fooling around. Just to give you guys a quick update though. The situation will stay kind of the same. I won't be doing as many videos by far. Only if there's a specific reason. Like now, with the new game coming out, of course in January, I will be reviewing Magic Media 2017 because the Blu-ray is coming out then. I'm looking forward to that a lot. The reason is actually because I have just talked about just about anything. By the way, I have not given up hope yet to go to Magic Media 2018 next summer. So, the topic of the video, Hatsune Miku Project Diva Future Tone Deluxe. It came out just about a week ago, and it is the definitive version of Future Tone, which came out digitally on PlayStation 4 about one and a half years ago. That game was a port of the arcade machine, which features over 230 songs and crazy amazing gameplay. So, this right here is not only a physical version for the first time, but also includes all the DLC previously released, and also a bit more extra content. There's a lot of negativity regarding this release, especially in the Western fandom. People are saying that this is just an easy way of Sega to make more money out of the same game. And it's not worthy especially of Miku's 10th anniversary that just happened a few months ago. Is it really that bad? Well, I will go over all the facts in this video. So this is the game box. Just looking at it makes me very happy. This is the Memorial Pack Edition. So it is really a collector's item and I'm just very glad to have. It's in a very nice box here with the awesome design of a Miku 10th Anniversary module, which is also in the game, by the way. And on the back there's all the Krypton Vocaloids too. When I take out the game here, there's, well, the normal version of the game uh, with the in-game render of Miku here. Uh, just a, well, normal PlayStation 4 game and on the back all the normal information. By the way, it's also PlayStation Pro enhanced, so if you have a 4K TV, which I haven't, you can also for the first time enjoy all this game in 4K, which is pretty great. In here, unfortunately, not really a manual like in the old PlayStation 3 days, but the, well, of course, the game disc. Uh, and then there's a Blu-ray coming with this memorial pack, which is pretty interesting, apart from an awesome design again uh, on the front. There's three Blu-rays coming with it, and also a nice uh, little booklet here, just well, naming all the songs that are on it. This is pretty much the history of all the PVs. Here in the first one, there is pretty much the first one, uh, second and extend, the original PlayStation uh, Portable games with all the original videos, so not the enhanced versions. And on the second disc, F and F second, on the third and final one, uh, Perciva X HD, and also for some reason, uh, Sank You from Future Tone is also included. So, yeah, this is just a nice thing to have. I collect this item, obviously, again, just something to have running in the background while you're doing something else. You can watch all the PVs in the original form, because of course, in the game, uh, it is all the Future Tone models, but here it is the original, so F, for example, uh, includes all the original F modules. So yeah, it is not just the same that you can just watch in the game. Yeah, so this is that, and then there's also a little special uh, mini soundtrack coming with it, with another nice design, and this is just 12 songs that are like the menu music and the jingles that play when you complete songs. Just a nice uh, additional thing to have, because it was never released anywhere else. And then there's also this little thing that was originally um, like wrapping all this stuff around it and I don't even know where to keep it but well just for completionist sake. So this is the game, an awesome collector's item. 
So now that I've shown you guys how the limited edition looks, I will go over all the stuff that is actually different in this version of the game, starting with a little few details. Fortunately for everybody who has played the original digital version of the game, as long as you have it still installed, you can easily import your save files. I was very relieved to find that out. For some reason though, there's new uh, trophies, so I don't know, it really doesn't matter that much. Apart from that, you won't find any differences in the menus and stuff. Even the leaderboards are carried over from the original Future Tone. The only thing not carried over if you import your save file are the screenshots you might have taken. So you have to kind of do that again. Not really a big deal. Apart from that, there's apparently a lot of bug fixes and stuff. I haven't noticed anything, but the game is running perfectly fine. The only thing I've noticed is that it also says not clear when you have this like mistake if you fail a song. So I don't know, they just wanted to drive the point home that you failed. The first actual new feature is to be found in the PV mode of the game. In that, you can watch all the videos of the game, like I said, over 230, and change the modules and all the add accessories as much as you want. It's really a nice thing. And you can also take pictures in it and then have them as the loading screens or actually just transfer them to your computer. I really loved it and I experimented with that a lot. So now they have added a feature that you can like zoom in and only like take a picture of a certain part of the screen. Like you can have a super close up, for example, which is kind of nice. And also, as the main feature, you can now add stickers and stuff like that. I experimented with that a bit, but I don't really see much point. It is typically Japanese though, it really fits, because if you go to Japanese arcades, you can see especially young Japanese uh, girls and women going there, taking like selfies of them and their friends, and then adding all kinds of graffiti and stickers to their pictures. So it really fits, but for me, personally, I don't really see much point in it. I also don't really get why, if you just add it to the screen, then continue to be that it will actually stay there. I mean, why would it like still fit for like another section? of the video, I don't really get that. And the only thing that I am really uh, a bit sad about is that you can't uh, like go back in the video, go forward. I was thinking about that previously, that would be a handy feature to have, but um, they didn't even add that. I thought now that they improved that mode, they would surely like add that as like a little uh, extra feature, but no, they didn't. So all in all, it's a nice thing to have, but like the sticker thing they added is really pretty pointless in my opinion, but still a very nice thing to take pictures of Miku in all the great videos. The next new stuff they added is new modules, yes, a stunning new uh, two of them. Yes, I have to admit, of course, that's a bit disappointing, there's only two new modules, but of course, there's already so many to be found in the core game, and the two they added are pretty cool. So first of all, there's the 10th anniversary Miku module, which looks awesome and can be used in, of course, all the videos, so that's pretty awesome to see. And also, there is the Ghost Room module, because they also added that as a new song, which is also a pretty cool module. Speaking of Ghost Rule though, probably the most interesting thing they added for this game. It is one of the also only two new songs they added for this game. Not only is the song of course pretty amazing and very famous, but also the video, they did a great job for that. It's a mix between like a dance TV and also a lot of stuff happening on the stage. It's really artistically made with a lot of like cuts and I really like it, just watch for yourself. The, the, the chart itself is pretty hard too, it's 9 stars, there are a lot of changes and I'm sure you will be busy trying to perfect it. The second and last new song they added is Tsuna no Wakse or Sand Planet, which was the theme song for this year's Magica Mita 2017, uh, which was produced by Hachi, a producer that made a comeback. By the way, the song really grew on me, but I still struggle to understand why you would release a song with kind of like a depressing meaning like that for the 10th anniversary. Sure, it can also mean that everybody's supposed to move on and there has to be new producers for Miku to go in the future with, which I agree, but still, it's kind of a depressing topic and I, I don't know why you would release that as a 10th anniversary song. The PV is the original one that was released on my birthday, by the way, 21st of July, which is a good choice and an obvious choice because it was a very well-made video with Miku with the, all the gang like wandering around in the desert. But of course, since it is a pre-rendered video, you can't actually change Miku's outfits and stuff like that. It's another 9 star song, of course, speaking of extreme difficulty here, so it will be very hard to perfect this one on the normal controller because of a lot of changes. One thing I don't get is why in the title does it say featuring Hatsune Miku, because obviously it's a Miku game, so all the songs are by Miku or her friends. I don't really understand that, but uh, whatever. Well, to be honest, with that I've already covered all the new stuff featured in the game already. But there's still a few more things I want to talk about, starting with something that kind of disappointed me looking at the extract stream charts. Looking at the arcade here, a lot of extreme charts that were previously not hard enough or didn't follow Miku's singing all that well, bit by bit got a new version, the extra extreme version. And of course, Future Tone got that feature too. But what did they do? Since the beginning of this year, pretty much, they stopped releasing new ones of these. Until like a month ago. Now there's four new ones. 
So, you can already see it coming, right? These four are not in Future Tone Deluxe and I really don't care what kind of sense does it make. So for like a year now they've stopped making more content for the arcade machines and only now with the release of Future Tone Deluxe coming, like they release new stuff and already the so-called definitive limited edition of the game is uh, not complete anymore, like what will they do? Release more content and DLC for the game now? Like already Future Tone Deluxe is not the complete version. Uh, what were they thinking? One of the main reasons I was looking forward to the release of this version of the game was also the release of this new Hody controller. This is a pretty cool controller, I like it a lot. I previously had one for the PlayStation 3, which was very similar to this one already. Like all the buttons are kind of the same, only now they feel a bit easier to press. So they kind of worked on that a bit, but still it's not possible to just spam on one button. I tried it, so you can't quite emulate the arcade feeling 100%. But yes, this is the main feature of this new controller. Like the four buttons in the middle are already labeled like in the arcade, so you're supposed to play it like in the arcade with the four buttons. So it means you can just hold down the buttons and still play it the same time and they even fixed the bug previously with the Persever X controller for the PlayStation 4 where when you press like right and then you couldn't press left anymore because what well, right and left cancelled each other out but now it's actually the physical buttons like that so you can like almost emulate the arcade feeling and especially for fast song with all the double notes I really love the feeling for it uh, like almost in the arcade. Uh, you can also use it for the PlayStation 3. Previously, the controllers for PlayStation 3 can't use for the PlayStation 4, but this is compatible with both. And you can even change it uh, by the assign button to the like original layout of the like normal controller in case you prefer that. So overall, um, well, uh, the only thing that kind of sucks is that because the spamming isn't possible on one button, you have to kind of get used to it with like the diagonal buttons here. Other than that, it's a really nice uh, feeling, and yeah, it's really. Very different playing the game. With that, I really recommend you guys getting the controller, especially if you didn't previously have previously have the first the X controller. Unfortunately, it's kind of expensive, 120 euro, and even more now, probably because it's sold out because it was kind of a limited thing. But in case you can get your hands on it, I would really recommend you getting it. It's a lot of fun to play with it. Okay, wow, but I made it. And so awesome! It's so fun to play with this. Oh my god. So overall, I don't really get the hate regarding the release of Future Turn Deluxe. Sure, they could have done more, they should have done more, at least released like the extra extreme charts, maybe a few more songs, a few more costumes, but still, I'm glad to have this version of the game. It's such a nice collector's item. It just makes me happy seeing it. It's a physical version of the game too, and just like reading stuff like that, 10th anniversary Miku, like it has been 10 years, it's amazing. I'm glad to have it, and every Miku fan should get this. Look at it this way guys, making games like that, especially with the detailed PVs, costs a lot of money. And sure, there will always be loyal Miku fans, like 10,000 of them coming to our concerts, but 10,000 for a game release? It's just not enough. There have to be a lot of casual fans buying it too. And currently, the Perdiva franchise is kind of struggling with that. I hope they can find a way for the future for the franchise, and I'm really curious to find it out. But I think releasing a collector's item like that to make some more money is a good idea. But in case you guys are worrying about Miku's success now, don't worry at all. All the events are a big success and they make all the money from there. Machika Mita last year, the 10th anniversary of Miku, was awesome. They sold so much merchandise there, made a lot of money there. It was an awesome event with so many people, I loved it a lot. And then of course, the Miku Symphony happened for the second time in a row, I heard that was great too. And then next year, there might be a concert in Paris for once actually. I'm very curious to find out about more details, if this will actually be a full concert too. And also in the region of Tokyo, there's currently an event happening Daiva the Diva, uh, Future Tone Deluxe, with a lot of merchandise, a lot of things, and yeah, I mean, they make a lot of money there. And even in places like China, a concert just happened, so guys, don't worry about Miku. Future Tone Deluxe, it's just a great game. So many costumes, so many songs, and an amazing gameplay. By the way, check out my full review on the basic version of the game that I made just a bit after it came out on my channel. So, in case you guys love Miku just as much as I do, you should get the collector's edition of this game, or just Future Tone Deluxe in general, and at the same time, support Sega and increase the chances of them being able to release a full new version of this gaming franchise again in the future. If you don't want to do it, but still want to have the new content, you can do just that on December 14th already for, I heard, 8 US dollars, you can get just, well, the new content. But if you still think Sega is just stupid and then they shouldn't have done that, and well, that's just your opinion and I won't stop you from having it, that's your choice. 
I am very happy to have it. I'm looking forward to more Miku events in the future and also the release of the Blurry of Mila 2017 and January, especially one part I'm looking forward to seeing again so much. So that review will be my next video. Apart from that I won't be making any promises, but it will surely not be my last video. But if you like this one, you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel to never miss another Miko video again, they're coming eventually. And also you can just go back to my older videos of course and watch them, enjoy them. So you know what's coming now, until next time and have a nice Miko day!